if you, let's see, let me, let me turn this a little bit this way. And you're welcome to kind of come on down this way if you'd like, um, if you can see. Okay, all right, good deal. Okay, all right, so, um, so yeah, so we've already, and I'll say it here since, we, again, since we've got the camera going, um, you know, I'm gonna have to have spinal surgery on February the 12th. And so we're going to kind of see it's, it's, um, it's not going through the back, it goes through the front to do this surgery. And they're basically gonna be putting, putting something in between the two, the two vertebra to cause it to grow into a single solid thing instead of two things that move. Um, but it is considered to be major surgery as opposed to outpatient surgery. So I will be like in the hospital for, I don't know, I can't, nobody can give me a clear sense. It's like they won't discharge you until they, they know that you can um, manage your pain with, with pills instead of an IV and make sure that you can get up and move and do certain things. So, you know, my last few weeks have been, um, and then the, what was stupid is it was supposed to be Monday. It was supposed to be the 27th, but they called me last Monday and they said that the second surgeon, it's a two surgeon tag team thing, he's not available and so they rescheduled it, which really is aggravating because it's like, I was, you know, you know, you get stressed out, you know, and so it's like, I want to get it, I want to get this over with as opposed to uh, <laughs> having it just, you know, I'm still waiting. So I added, added two weeks. So, um, so anyway, so we're still going to do stuff, but we're going to not have a, we're going to have a meeting on February the 8th and we're not going to have a meeting in March, but I still have April, May, June. So we're going to, as my grandmother used to say, name it and claim it. And so um, we're going to believe that, that we'll be back, you know, after February, we'll be back in April. Um, and we'll try to come up with some kind of a fun project that we can, we can do all together. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanted to um, show you was a cool new app I found recently. It's $3.99. It's called IntroMate. It's going to be the one that's down there. Um, this is something where you can create intros to your videos. Um, so it's got a number of intros that are built in and then you can also purchase purchase additional ones but like uh, you know some of them are just really really super cool and they come with come with music but you don't have to let's see if where's that reminder let's turn that down a little bit Ooh, wow that's way loud all right um, so let's try that again. You can go in and just write what you want. Um, you can change change colors and um, I mean that's, that's just pretty. That's just pretty neat. And as you can see, there's you know you've got five on each row and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine nine full rows of five, so 45 plus four more, so 49. And then you can see that there's others that you can purchase in, in packs that are like, this is, what, this is showing you all of the different ones that you can get for this additional $4, $4 pack. So this I thought was super cool um, if you need intros for your for your videos. Now, one of the things that I think is gonna be like stupendous for everybody is I have found a source of videos that are royalty free, free to download, like tons and tons and tons of videos. Um, it's a website that's called Pixabay. Um, you can see it up at the top, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. You do want to get a, an account with them which is free. They don't ask for super tons of information, but they have photos, illustrations, vectors, and videos. Um, so I've, 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 I've touched videos. Like you can see things down below. These are some of the newest videos that have been, have been put in there, but like you can search for, for things. So um, this one does have an app, but I would completely avoid the app because it just, it just doesn't work. It, it's just it's a non-functional app so I always go through the website so if you'll notice I just I just typed in filmmaking um, the first row kind of pay attention it'll say it says sponsored videos Shutterstock those first three that top row are going to be like on a different website and you have to pay for it but everything else below that these other four um, 
are, are not. So, you know, that middle one where, where you can see boats and an island, I don't think that one is actually going to be themed to filmmaking. So some people, I think, when they upload them, they'll, they'll add in like little tags that when you go to search, you'll be like, this is not it. But like, so here we are. I press the first one. And so this is 40 seconds of just somebody messing with a camera, right? Um, it's, I think that the kids that want to, want to, to practice with editing and they're like, where do I get the film clips? Um, this is going to be great because they can just download what they want and use it. And so when I press free download, you'll notice it, it gives you a bunch of different options. So you don't even have to, to download if the 20 megabyte one if you aren't going to need that. If you're just playing around with, you know, how can I get my editing the way I want it to be, then you can pick a smaller one. Now, it's a little tricky if we're on iOS to get the file, just like we know, moving files on iOS can be, can be tricky. The newest OS, though, OS 13, has made some things possible that you couldn't really do before. So in this case, if I was going to, uh, if I was going to download this, you know, I clicked the free download, and I can click download, right? And it's going to come up in this other, other window. There's two things that you'd have to do to be able to do. Have you used the files, the files at all section on these? Okay. So there's a, there's, they're trying to make it a little more like working with a laptop or, or whatever. So there's, there's a section with files, okay? And you can, once you learn how to do it, you can place these audiovisual things into files and then from files where you need them to be, right? So I'm going to be pressing the share button up at the top. Um, and you notice it looks, it looks a little different than the way it used to. So we still have our saved Dropbox. So if you're still using Dropbox, and I am, I use that a good bit, you can save it directly. But there are things called shortcuts that you can do. So I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to say, you can see, you can see the, uh, the, the icon there. I'm going to press that. You can actually search for, these are some of the ones that I've already got down. And you'll notice I've got one that says download file, and then down at the bottom it says download Pixabay video. But what you can do is you can just, um, you can go like this and just, you can search. I don't think this is, I think this is just searching on mine. Um, let's see, where are we? We're going to go to gallery. So you notice this almost looks like the app store, right? So you can search for a shortcut, so you can be like, download video or download file, you'll notice. And it says, when I'm going to press on it, it says download the file at the URL at the web address on your clipboard and save it using the document picker. So this one, I haven't figured, these seem too complicated to write my own, but they're available. And so if you get that shortcut, then one of the things that you can do is you can do the download Pixabay video. Now this still puts it in a particular spot. So this one still lets me put it to Dropbox, but if I wanted to, I could I could change it so that it could go to files. This one's this one's this makes it very easy if I'm making any kind of sense um, to do that. So um, this is also good for for B roll. Um, let me see if I've got the video. Um, I'm actually going to be um, using the. Uh, I'm going to be using this surgery as a way to do a film, like a documentary. So I'm doing that. Um, let's see. Oh, I don't think I have it on here. It's going to be in here. I was going to show you. I was able to use it for some. Um, I think. Let's. See. Let's let's look at this. All right. So this is a this is one I did for a local organization within the last year. And so the background that you see that was from Pixabay. And then here we are again. The little that was just I got it from Pixabay. This is B Pixabay. This is from Pixabay. 
this is, this is a photo from a site I'm going to show you where I use the zoom in. This is from Pixabay, and that's another photo. So this, is, this one's from a, a, a photo place, and so is this one, and so is this one. So even though the main topic is this interview that we were doing, to make people watch for the whole commercial, you know, I'm picking other things that punctuate it. Um, but having that B-roll is amazing. You may not find what you want, but then again, you might. Um, this is another one where the video is, is there. So um, let's think, what's another, what's another topic that we could, we could search Oh, and that's the other thing is it gets a little bit it gets a little bit um, twitchy with the searches sometimes. So if you're consistently searching for something normal and you're not seeing something come up, just go back to the main homepage and and start start again from there. I don't know. It kind of gets bogged down, and so you know you might we search for filmmaking, but then if I searched cars, it might it might try to look for two things together like that. I don't know. It's very weird. Um, but you can see there's there's all manner of things. What's something else we could search for that you guys might might need? What would be something? Let's see if they've got, I don't know, if they have anything Disney. They don't, and so everything here is sponsored. Um, is sports too broad of a category? No, it probably wouldn't be. They, but we're going to try this again. All right, that's what I'm telling you. When you get that face, you know something's weird, because sports is like, see, here it is. A minute ago, they told me it's not there, but here you go. Um, so let's see. This is this is 30 seconds of a marathon. Ooh, slow motion. That's kind of cool. It really is. And I mean, this is something that if you know, if you had, like, I've I've actually considering using some of the footage that I've shot and just. I mean, you don't get anything for it. You just it's like, well, it's somebody could use this, right? Well, um, you know. Like shopping thing. You could take that marathon footage and right. announce when you're meeting or where you're meeting or right, right. get your running shoes here's, on. Here's 13 seconds of, uh, sort of like of diving, thing. right? Um, so I, this is something I want all the students to know about so that they can um, download footage and actually edit things. I mean, you could I don't know, there's so many, I mean, I don't know why I, people would think juggling is, is sports, but, you know, there's, there's all kinds of things that you can put with. And this is, like I said, this is the license you can see right here, free for commercial use, no attribution required, which means that when you use it, you don't even have to mention in your credits where it came from. Now, personally, if I'm downloading from here, I'm, I'm actually, like, keeping it in a folder that says Pixabay, um, just so that I know where, where it came from, just in case. So if we, if we wind up shooting something, um, like a short film or whatever that we wanted to, if I, if I shot something that I wanted to enter into a, like a competition of some sort, most of those competitions are gonna want to know where you got all the footage and make sure that the licenses are correct. And so Pixabay is, is one, I'm gonna look and see because I know there's another there's another um, place that I'm um, I have found recently. Pond Five, that's a, that's another one. Um, Pond Five is mostly stuff that is um, mostly stuff that you you have to um, pay for, except they also have an awful lot of things that are um, free to download. And free to use and if you get an account with them they will actually send you an email once a week and they'll say this is the this is the footage that that we're giving away for free this this week so for instance um, driving down an autumn road this was this was um, free footage that they were giving away let's see if it'll come on we're trying to make it play from the website so there we go Ooh very pixelated because we're playing it over the all right um, pond five is another place where you can get some of that they've got like archival footage um, like old old newsreel kinds of things as well um, 
vid easy v i d e e z y is another one now that one i've found some that i find very interesting and in a minute in a few minutes i'm going to show you guys the new blending modes on luma fusion this is one of the this is one of the things that um, we're going to be able to blend on top of footage that we already shot to make it look like it was shot using an old old camera but we couldn't we used to not be able to do that with um, we didn't used to be able to do that until these blending modes so that's super cool um, f the photos for photos that that you can put into your videos and do the the zoom in we've got unsplash and there is an app for that U N S P L A S H and um, likewise you don't have to you don't have to credit people the only thing that you can't do with these images is turn around and sell these images but I could take this image and I can I can edit it any way I want I can put it into my projects even if it's something that's that's uh, commercial and I don't have to credit anybody this one's the app works really well um, and then another thing that you can do is you can have collections, right? And they can be private or not. And you can, um, so for instance, the work I do with the Kiwanis, I've got one for the Kiwanis. Well, they do the Fire at the Foothills Barbecue Festival and they do Pancake Day. So these are images uh, so of it's things. A, a limited free storage, basically. It could be. I mean, it's like if you're going through, like sometimes I'll just, I'll just browse for the long, long time. And it's very easy to, so if I was, um, let's see. So if I, if, um, if I search pancakes and I find one that I like, right, that little green check mark means I've already added it to a collection and I'm not having to hold on to it. Or I could just hard it. You know, but collections allow you to kind of organize it a little bit better. So as you could kind of see, I've got I've got 11 collections and then 120 that I've liked. So I've got social media images. You know, these are green screen film backgrounds, right? So if we were doing green screen, we could take out the background and make it make it be all these different images if we wanted it to be still. So those are two that are super cool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go get some equipment over here and I'm going to show you some of the new things. Let's What's see. the name of that app again? Uh, this one is Unsplash. U-N-S-P-L-A-S-H. Um, and I believe it's also available as a web website. But their app, unlike Pixabay, their website does not I mean, this one, the app actually works, <laughs> so that's cool. Um, all right, so I am using I am using my my uh, my phone to record at the moment, so I won't I won't actually be able to take this stuff off um, to show you. But I did upgrade to the iPhone Pro Max. Um, it is amazing in terms of it having built-in three lenses. Um, the app that we use to record is Filmic Pro, and with Filmic Pro. Um, they've got an update that's going to be coming before the end of the year that will allow you to shoot using all of the cameras at the same time and creating either a combined or four separate files. So in other words, you've got out here you would have like normal, zoomed in, and super wide. And then the other camera would be the one facing the user. So if you set it up right, like in, they did a commercial, I think, when they launched the new, the new OS last year to kind of show this, this, this thing that's coming. And they had, like they were shooting in a big warehouse and they had a band and they had this on a, on a, like a tripod. And it was like you had a super wide with the band. You had one where it's a little bit closer. You had one that was really close up and you could shoot you could come I think we could come up with a reason why the person shooting it also needs to have have it as well you know what I mean be, be recorded as well why it says game changer and I agree for one thing you're shooting your a and B roles at the same time you definitely could be I mean I was just I'm trying to I was thinking through like how would I want to do that but and you you'd have to be very careful with your placement of the camera to make sure that the the telephoto of the lenses is getting kind of what what you want but yeah I mean that like you say a and B at the same time um, well, and so your friend has one too. Now you're shooting eight. 
Yeah. Oh, oh. It's Instead I mean, two, complete you know. game changer, right? Yes. So, um, okay. So this is this is a, a cool little bag that's just that was designed just to carry iPhone photography and filmmaking supplies. So that's kind of cool. It's got a place down here where you could keep like the, the selfie stick or something of that. You could keep that down there. So I did not upgrade my my phone until I knew that the people that make the lenses had the case available that would fit this particular one. Now, the thing that's kind of stinky is that you can only put these lenses in front of the, the wide angle and the, uh, the telephoto of the lenses, not the super wide because the placement of the camera would have blocked, I don't know. They said it wasn't possible the way they were doing it. So I've got that, and because I'm recording audio on my phone, I can't, I can't show you that. But um, the moment lenses are absolutely amazing. Um, so think about it. If you've one of the things that when we shoot with with our phones, that becomes kind of an issue. I think is that even when you're shooting with the telephoto telephoto lens, the one that's closest up, you're still kind of getting too wide of of, of a shot. To get that cinematic look where you're you're really up close to something so i've even got they make a telephoto lens and you can put the telephoto lens on top of the telephoto lens that gets you even closer because you've got your dslr the cool thing with dslrs is those lenses that go on you can actually zoom in and out and it's actually making two lenses move closer or further away in order to zoom in when you're shooting with the digital, which is what we've mostly been doing, um, you never want to zoom because all you're really doing is blowing something up. So you have this amount, this amount of data, and you're making it very pixelated because you're making it, making it, blowing it up. So by using some of these lenses in the right combinations, we can actually get that nice and tight look when we're shooting somebody up close without having to be this close to somebody, <laughs> right? Um, or, or something else. So I have, for us to be able to use, um, I have a telephoto, I have a wide angle, and then I have a super wide, like, you know, like fish, fish eye kind of lens, and um, what is known as an anamorphic lens. Uh, I'm trying to think what's a good, have you ever seen like a sci-fi movie where it seems that the points of light make lines across the screen. Have you ever seen it? It's like a, let me see if I can find a good example of, it's called a lens flare. Um, so let's try this. Anamorphic lens flare. So if you've ever seen one that has those points of light and it seems to go in both directions, um, that is a good example of um, somebody using a kind of lens that's called an anamorphic lens. And um, let's see, I don't want to, I'm just going to unscrew, going to unscrew this and kind of show you. It's a square lens, so this other stuff is to let me put, put lenses or put filters on. But if you could, can you see how it's, it's vertical? And if you really look, there's, um, there's like a, there's something inside the lens that's like a piece of plastic or something that is like this. And you can see that the slit, the slit is an oval, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So when you're actually shooting it, it's squeezing and it's letting you shoot really, really wide. Um, and then when you bring it into the editor, you do something called a de-squeeze. Now Filmic is great. You can actually check some boxes to tell it that you're using an anamorphic lens and to go ahead and de-squeeze it so you can see what it looks like. And um, there's movies, cinema, if you want that cinematic quality, then these kinds of anamorphic lenses are going to um, really make it look like that. The, 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 the director that I'm thinking of that, that uses, uses these kinds of lens flares a lot would be like Steven Spielberg. Like if you were going through and you were looking through and seeing like Spielberg, like maybe E.T. or something like that, um, it, it adds this really interesting quality. So I've even got the anamorphic lens, and I've gotten to where I shoot with that an awful lot. Um, the other thing that's super cool, and I got some additional ones um, for Christmas this year, is there are 
there are uh, different degrees of like, they're, they're like sunglasses for your lens, right? Um, they make fi these kinds of filters for the DSLRs as well. Um, so this, this holder from Moment, which is who does the lenses, fits a 62 millimeter um, lens. Um, so this is something that when you, when you go outside on a bright, shiny day, sometimes it's too bright. And so if you use something like this, you can actually get the details from the clouds back again. So if you're, sh like when I shoot at the uh, farmer's market, I wind up with, um, if, I use, if I use one of these lenses, you, everything that's down low near the ground, all of the different people that are there in their tents, that looks normal, but the sky also looks blue and the, you can see the clouds as opposed to it being just this kind of bright mass. So we've got a number of different kinds of uh, filters. I've got numerous, numerous filters, including one that's purple. I'm not even really sure what, what that would do. Um, but we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna have some fun with, with these as well. So um, up our game. But that's what this is, is any one of these can fit into here. And then you just you just screw that screw that on, and you've got something that's going to let you shoot in a way that uh, you know you can shoot where it's really really bright. Because we know that the iPhones you know they don't do super well when it's super super dark, and they don't do super well when it's like crazy crazy bright. So these tools let us kind of get in between those um, those two things. Oh, I forgot. I've also got a. Uh, I've also got a, um, I can't think of the name of it, it's like a gimbal, it's motorized now. So you can set the thing up and you can walk the same way that you, we were able to do with the, uh, I'm trying to think which one that one was, we had the, like, the steady cam vibe, right, that kind of, it had that balancing weight yes. at the bottom. This gimbal is entirely motorized and it works with Filmic Pro. And you can sit there and with a little thumbstick, you can actually make it, make it pan and pan up and down and you can walk with it or run with it and it's stabilizing it as well. So super cool stuff, right? We just have to find some good places that we can use to work it. Um, another, thing, another thing that's over here, um, it, we did this with, with a Kickstarter and it took forever. It was actually, these lights were actually supposed to arrive they were supposed to arrive in time for us to use them on our short film. <laughs> yeah, needless to say, that, that, didn't, that didn't happen. Um, but these are super cool. I have two of them. I've already cracked the glass on, on the other one. I named these Thing 1 and Thing 2. Uh, but I've got it taped. It still works just fine. Um, this, this one is waterproof to 30 feet, right? Um, it is magnetic so that you can actually, like if we were going to shoot a scene in a car at night, you would be able to easily hide these things in different places. Um, there's an app that lets you make adjustments remotely using the Bluetooth, um, and it's got multiple different, different brightnesses. Um, it also comes with some diffusers, so you can make it so that it's not quite so glaringly bright, which would work really well in, in the car if it sticks. Let's see if I can get some. It is. Let's see, I think I got it. Yeah. And of course you can warm it up, warm it up using this one, which, I mean, they're cool. The company didn't do a super good job of making sure their Kickstarter got out on time and communicating with people, but these are super awesome. This part comes off, this just screws in. But like I said, it's, they're rechargeable using like micro, micro USB, uh, like USB-C, so. Those are, those are a little cool. Um, the other thing I was going to show you guys, and I'm not really sure how we will use this with filmmaking, um, got to kind of keep it out of the direct sunlight because otherwise you will start a fire or set your, set your hand, set your hand, get, burn your hand. Um, but this, this is, <laughs> this, is a, this is a lens ball. And um, it makes for some very interesting. You see how I'm upside down, Wyatt? I can see it from here. <laughs> um, this, I think, we could find some interesting. It's great for photography. Um, what a lot of people, I've got this. This part right here will screw onto my GorillaPod. 
so I could actually like place it somewhere. It's a suction cup. Um, most people with a DSLR, it's a little easier than with a phone because you can actually make sure that the focus is, is here. Um, but what most people do is they'll make sure that the background is, is kind of blurred out. They're focusing on the image that's inside the ball and then they'll take it into an editing program and they will flip the ball, right? Or flip the entire image so that you get the image right side up. Um, so this was, this was another thing that I th I'm trying to come up with some good uses for, for actually filming. And so I feel like we ought to like good. test with this and see if we can come up with some some interesting ways um, to use that. Most of this stuff's been like Christmas gifts and stuff over the last couple of years. I'm like, this is what I need. Um, okay. Good stuff. Yes, sure. exactly. Um, all right. So what now? What I want to do? Well, before I do that, I want to show you guys this, and we will need to discuss when we have more people around um, whether or not um, whether or not we want to continue with what we were doing before. Um, when I went out for my first surgery, um, we were working on the practical special effects and miniatures, and we were working on our, our shoebox models. So we need to kind of decide if we want to try to, you know, back up a little bit and pick pick up pick up where we left off and continue to do that. If we decide to do that, so what we did was we created these boxes, and so if it was lengthwise, we decorated the inside of the box. We were still kind of in that stage of things, and. Um, the idea was everybody got to come up with um, whatever they wanted to be in their box, right? So like Betsy's, Betsy's was um, kind of a fairy, fairy forest, right? So she decorated it with, with moss and what looked like little trees on the way back and a, and a pathway and she even found like a tea light that was battery operated that flickered like a candle and we put little tiny sticks around it and it looked just like it was a, a fire like it, it was really super cool and then at the very back she put we were every every box was supposed to have a like a location it was supposed to have something in there that is a structure of some kind right and a way into the structure so like a window or a door so she made a little toadstool house at the very very end and what we were I've got your video Perfect, perfect, that's awesome. Go, you can go ahead and show that to Noah. It's very short. Yeah, so. this is where we were when, when we went out. So all that is inside of the shoe box? Very detailed. Right, so what we were gonna do, what we were gonna do was everybody was gonna do that, and then we were gonna pick a day that we were gonna do the filming. And we were going to film, film like, through, essentially zoom, zoom up to the structure and up to whatever whatever entrance door or window that was in that structure and then stop then we were going to build a larger scale model of whatever room is inside that structure so for instance for for Betsy's it's going to be a fairy a fairy room inside the toadstool right um, right for Wyatt's, it's going to be like maybe maybe like the the grand hall inside the castle. Um, I I'm planning to do one where it's the surface of the moon and the USS Enterprise. You know that's 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 uh, in orbit around the moon. I've got like white model clay. You know that the, the foam stuff, and I'll I'll make and we'll we'll zoom past the craters on the moon. Up to where up to where the Enterprise is, and then mine will be the ho probably the holodeck because that'll be the easiest one because it's black with with stripes and stuff. But all of this to say, I've come up with when we do if we decide to continue with that, um, the next the room inside our structures I want to be like like something like a foot and a half. I haven't really a foot to two feet square cube. So I took some foam core board and tried to kind of see what, what I could come up with, right? So this is kind of a, this is sort of what we would be wanting to build, okay? And we'll use this foam core board because it is, it's, it's lightweight, but it's, it's sturdy. The reason I've got this built this way is because if we, if we just make a cube that's open on the top, it's going to be difficult for us to film around in it. So I thought we need to be able to move the walls of this room 
in such a way that we can get all the angles that we might. So you can see that it's, it's basically hinged in, hinged in all of the different places. So for instance, we can move this wall out of the way. We can move this wall out of the way, and we can shoot in this way. If we want to then like shoot, shoot on this part, we can also move this out of the way, and that gives us room. And we can do the opposite. So we can literally get a 360 degrees. It'll be, because it's going to be one or two feet, we'll be able to get the phones inside that cube to see whatever. And the other thing I thought would be kind of fun if we want to try it is you know, LumaFusion also does green screen, chroma key out. So it might be fun for us to, once we have that built and we've, we've done some of that filming, throw up our green screen and actually film ourselves and put ourselves into our little spaces, <laughs> right? Yeah. So I think once you put all that together, where you zoom, you zoom through the world, up to the structure, to the window or the door, mm -hmm. and then into the actual room or window or door, you know, inside the room, and then have us, have us in there, you know, and we can scale ourselves as large or as small as we like to, to be in there. Um, so if everybody's keen on that, I haven't made my box. So you know, for mo uh, if you guys have your box around, that's good. that's awesome. Um, if you don't, we can all start from scratch and we can do that. But we're going to need more than uh, more than what we have here to make that decision about how we want to how we want to move forward. But this is what I came up with some time ago, and I, I just haven't had a chance to be able to share it with you guys. But I think this is something that could really really work. And I've been to I think it's Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby has some like amazing stuff for the people that are, um, that like doll house, like, like they make scale model houses, right? And all the furniture and, but they even make, they even make like strips of wallpaper that are sized down for like some of these smaller houses. And it tells you what the scale is. It'll be like, you know, one thirty second scale. Um, so, you know, these could be as complicated as you want. Like I said, if I do the holodeck, from Star Trek The Next Generation, then it's just gonna be black walls with, with a grid painted, painted on, you know? Um, which maybe it's not. Maybe, maybe instead, maybe instead we green screen. <laughs> I paint it green and then we, we paste that on. So um, everybody be kind of thinking about that. Hopefully we'll have more people on the 8th that we can, um, that we can do that with. All right, so, um, so now I wanted, to, I wanted to do is show you guys some stuff with LumaFusion. Um, okay, so one of the things that they've done that's made this editing software so much better is we now have six layers of uh, that, a video that we can put into LumaFusion and six layers of audio. So, you know, you might think, oh, that's too many layers for the audio. And actually, it's seven if you really want to count it because or even more, you could, I could even say 12, because each of the individual clips that you shoot that has audio can still be playing, right? So you technically could have like 12, essentially, layers of sound. And so if you think about it, you use up those layers of sound pretty fast. So if you, have, if you want background music, that's, that's one layer. Um, if you want one piece of music to blend into a second piece of music, that might be two, so that you can have one fading out and one fading in. Um, sound effects, uh, a narration track, all of those things will, will add up. So um, let's see, I'm going to, I was opening, I had just, where did I put it? My goodness, it's gone. There it is, okay. So let's see, I'm going to turn that one off. This is... This is a um, this is a clip this is a clip that I got from Pixabay. Right. It's obviously a tra military training exercise. There's nothing special about this particular clip. It's just it's just kind of just kind of there. Um, now, I off to the left, you can see that they've got some new buttons for uh, for LumaFusion. One of them allows you to turn, turn a layer on and off, which is great. And you can also turn off the, the audio. I don't know if you can see where I'm, I'm turning it off. But I've turned the audio off, and I've turned that top layer off. Now, this is a trick I learned very recently that I think is, is pretty, it's pretty amazing, and it uses the new blending modes. Um, if you've ever edited 
photos, you know, you oftentimes will use blending modes to make things give them the look that you want. So the idea that you can you can do that here is amazing. So I'm going to show you before we do that part. I'm going to show you. Um, Let's, let's take a look at this, right? And I'll scroll it. Come on, open up. All right. So, um, let's see if that's... Get back here to the end. Let's see. All right, so this was a tutorial I did. You can see a minor film school, and it's blended, it's blended through um, let's see if this one actually shows the Delta, doesn't show the Delta Green. This is not the one I wanted to show you guys. Um, I've been doing a lot of videos for my husband's, for my husband's company. Um, all right, so here we go. You see, do you see the symbol in the background, that circle? You can kind of see through it, but not exactly. So I've used a blend mode to, um, to do that. And I'll show you, for goodness sakes, I will show you, um, on the project that we're working on here, what what we can do with it. All right, so this one, this this trick allows you to put, and we're not finished with it. Allows you to put the words behind something that's in the foreground, so it's there, but it's it's behind. So what we've done is we've got our normal video, and then this top layer. First thing we did was just do a title, right? So I just decided attack was a good one since this is military, right? I picked green specifically because we're going to put something else in that place. And since this color green is a good is a good bright color to be able to key out when we're doing green screen stuff, that's why it's it's like that. Um, so using the bottom left where it says frame and fit, below that we now have blending. Um, you've got opacity, which is how much it shows up, right? So you can, if you can see attack, I can, I can make it go away. And then you can see below that it says blend mode. So when you do that, every single one of these little things that are scrolling by is, would make that look differently. So like for instance, normal is going to put it on the top because it's a layer sitting on top. Um, darken just makes it darker. That's what I use, I believe I use dark, uh, darker to put that symbol in the background um, of the other. Multiply, color burn. In this case, what we used is darker color. And this, this trick works best where you have um, the image in the foreground, in this case it's the, the helicopter, is darker than what's behind it. So you've got the, the screen, I mean you've got the, um, got the sky, right? and then you have this darker image in front, the helicopter. So by using darker color, it winds up putting it to the back. I'm not entirely certain why or how, but there it is, right? And you can see, you can see that it's pretty good. There's a little bit that's showing through in the helicopter, just a little bit, but when it's playing, you're not gonna notice. So the first thing that you do is you decide what you wanna say, put it up there in nice big letters, Pick green as your font color. It doesn't need anything that's uh, doesn't need any shadows. It doesn't need any color around the edge. And then what you're going to do is you're going to export this. So we're just going to do movie, photos. Everything looks good. So we're going to do that. And we're going to go ahead and write the movie. And then we're going to pull it in a second time. And we're going to key out the green with whatever we want to do. So one of the things I got from a place called Rocket Stock, which also sometimes um, has, it also sometimes has free, um, free footage that you can download or assets of different kinds. So here we are, we're gonna start a new project. Um, I got one that's this like crazy nebula, nebula looking stuff. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna take, take this and we're gonna put it back in. Now, off to the left, you've got the images that are for this track. You can see, you see the arrow that comes to the flat? Can you see that over here? Yes. Okay. So what that does is 
that allows things, the, the clips, to kind of snap together in the timeline. Sometimes what you need to do, though, is, is when you press that button, now it says it's got a downward arrow. So I can that lets me take this clip and move it up. And it allows there to be space now for me to put for me to put a, a video behind it. Um, it would be a couple of extra steps if we couldn't do this. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you I'm gonna put it back where it was, and I'm gonna show you what would happen if I tried to do that exact same thing with the arrow pointing sideways. Well, that went, that did it either way. All right, this is not a good example of what I was trying to trying to show you. So you can just kind of ignore that. Um, <laughs> just ignore it. Um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to go to my imported stuff. Let's see, Dropbox. I'm going to find my find my. Uh, I've got Rocket Stock Stock Nebulas. Um, let's take a look. So you see how everything kind of moves a little bit. I'm going to use this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it underneath. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to basically make that green be see-through. So we're going to go back to that clip and we're going to open it up. And we're going to use the symbol down at the bottom for the special effects, color and effects. And we're going to go to, you notice it's got a key. We're going to go to chroma key. So we're going to try the first one that says green screen key. Ooh, we're going to have to dial that back because you <laughs> notice how much of it it's pulling out, right? That's awesome. Um, so let's see, let's see what we can do here. Let's try the hue. That's working it. So I'm dialing it back, dialing it back. That did a decent. There we go. Okay. We're still missing little bits of the we're still missing little bits of the the green over there oh there we go there we go okay uh, let's see what that looks like it's not a super Ooh, look at the it doesn't completely key it out does it yeah. let's see i might not have picked the best the best background but let's let's take a look let's see if brightness has anything to do with it Wait, wait, wait. I think we almost got it there. But we're going to ignore what's in the trees there. Because it's just a couple of little pixels that I can notice, but probably nobody else. Let's see what that looks like when we do it. Now, one thing that might make it more obvious that what we have behind, behind that is, is, is moving one thing we might do is go down to this, that clip, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do speed. We'll speed it up, let's say, five times. So we'll get faster motion. And you notice it shortens the clip, but if you're, if you're looking at it, you can see that it's, oops, yeah, we ran out. <laughs> Anyway, I think this is super fun because there has not been a way in the past for us to put, put images behind, put, put text behind. So we can make that very dramatic and if you want to, you can also, you'd have to do it before you exported that first time. You could actually probably make, make it make some movement, make the, track, the, uh, the, track it in a different way um, before you export it and then do your green screen stuff. And it doesn't have to be a moving image behind. I mean, we could, we could, um, come on, we could undo that. And we could, we could delete that, and we could go into photos. Um, let's see, that's in the videos. Let's not do that. Let's go to albums. Uh, let's see, I got wallpapers. Let's use a wallpaper, and we'll use. Mm, It's not, let's see, let me, let me turn that other one. We're going to 
turn that top layer off. This is the image I'm using. But I may want to move the more of the nebula stuff up a little bit higher, right? Because that's where that's where our, our font is. So let's try that. And we'll you can see. And as you play it, it just it's a static image, but it looks exactly like what you want. I mean, that could be super fun for like, you know, let's say you were shooting a video for, um, oh, we ran out. Um, let's say you were shooting, shooting a video that was like for your family, you know, like let's Disney, you guys, you guys like going to Disney. Um, you know, you could, you could have it be like, you know, Magic Kingdom, you know, in the back. I mean, and if you're, if you're videoing walking down Main Street with the castle in the background with the sky in the top part, you could have it back behind you know, and you'd still be able to read and know, okay, this is Magic Kingdom, but you've got the castle in front of it. Yeah. It, could be, it could be a lot of fun to be able to do, to do that. Let's see. So with the blending modes, you can do a bunch of different kinds of things. Um, let me, I'm going to delete these two, and we're going um, to work on something else here. Let's see. I'm going to take this image, and I'm going to put it, I'll go ahead and put it here for right now. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, we're going to start with start with this one. So here's here's the shield the shield logo. I am going to I'm going to make it much larger. All right. Okay. So if I have a a video that I want to have that logo on, there's the blending modes. We're gonna let's see. Let's just, we're going to pick, I'm going to put this on top because I'm going to swap these. Oop. Unchain. Okay. Okay. So, here is, here is a video. We did like an unwrapping kind of video. I shot it really big so that, no thank you, that I could zoom, zoom in and crop out my husband's feet and some of the equipment and whatnot. We're just using it just to be a background. So if we wanted to put that shield logo somewhere on that video, um, you notice I've got the shield logo on top. You can't see anything that's underneath. You just got that logo. Um, so blending modes are where that's going to be. That's going to be helped, right? So you have to kind of, it always opens up size and position, so you have to go down to, the, to blending. So you notice this is normal, which basically means it's one video laid on top of the other. So unless you play with the opacity, which we could do, you know, we can, we can, we can fade it out. That's one way you could do it. Um, but this is another one. So you can start going with these blending modes to see what, how, how the two layers blend. So that's kind of cool. You've got part of the video that's that's showing through um, through the logo. That's a little cool, but maybe that's not what we want. So we'll hit, we'll try multiply. Well, that didn't change it too, too much. Color burn, boy, that does weird things. Linear burn, darker color, lighten. Ah, look at that. So if we go back to the size and the position, right? Maybe we want it to kind of look like, kind of look like that. Maybe we want to say this is a S.H.I.E.L.D. Avengers video. So you notice that's going to be there until you tell it not to be. But those blend modes, you can keep playing with it until you find what you think is going to work best. Screen. Oh, well, that, that brightened it up a little bit more. And sometimes, you know, like Color Dodge, this one would look like it uh, is almost burned in. I'm going to move it so you can see it there. We'll put it here on the dark. Um, so every one of these, this one is the one I think I like best, linear dodge. Look at that. This is the kind of thing that like I was telling, showing you with those other, that other video, and I'm going to, I'm going to look and import it and find it where if we wanted to make it look like this was something that was shot with a um, shot with an old movie camera, 
those, uh, those video assets that I was showing you, the one that had that overlay, this is something that would allow us to do that. Blend modes make it possible because otherwise this is what it looks like. So if I go in with, the, with that and I, we do, again, the blend modes, what we're going to do is just keep on messing with it until, you know, that's one, that's another one. If we were playing, and if you think, oh, this is too much, you can dial it back with the opacity. Um, let's pick a different um, bottom video. Let's see. I guess these are the ones I've got. Uh, we'll just we'll just use we'll use the attack one. I'm gonna um, I'll replace that, and we'll turn off our shield logo. And look how look how that looks different. It doesn't it doesn't look quite as much like it's been shot with a. <laughs> it doesn't look quite as much like it's been shot with a video. But the thing that makes that us using that possible is the blend modes. Um, another one that I thought was super cool, because I had, I had some people want me to do a video that showed um, how, how do you make surveillance camera footage for their game, like fake surveillance. So I used this clip as part of it. Um, but for that one, I used an, an app so that people could just buy this one app, and this one app would allow them to do that. But if you're using LumaFusion, You've got all kinds of different things that you can you can put on it to make it look. So here's here's some crazy crazy VHS kind of static. Um, which again, if we let's see before I do this, I'm going to turn off turn off the uh, the old style film one. So we're going to edit that top layer, and we're going to go down to the blending modes. And once again, we're just going to you know darken. You get a little bit of it. Multiply, color burn. You just kind of play with it until you see what you, I don't know if that's going to look quite, yeah. So if you're looking for like just kind of glitchy, glitchy video, videotape. A little bit, maybe not, maybe not the best. You could work though, since we're fans of the 80s. Yes, we are fans of big fans of the eighties. You know, trying to show some retro I think what we would want to do probably is we would probably also want to edit the the, the core footage as well. And that brings us to um, there's lots of things that are baked in that you can see that fades it out. So like less color would probably would probably help with with that looking the way that it did. Um, the little square little cube box. Um, LUTs, lookup tables, has to do with, um, it's almost like color grading, like giving a particular look to, to the film. And you can develop your own, and there's some that are already built in to this program, but you can also purchase them and load them in. You can also do that with fonts. So I actually purchased a bunch, got them on sale, um, where it's it's giving everything a particular look. So like this one is supposed to be a color that a color scheme that is closer for the movie Cloverfield Lane. So you got 310 to Yuma. So this is like a, a what do you call it? A uh, it's a western. Um, Alien. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's one that we. Here we go. This one they say is the best for uh, Avengers Avengers Infinity War. I'm going to take the faded part off. There we go. Black Panther. It's kind of interesting because it, it just makes the whole... So this is a one-click thing that looks like it's supposed to have this, a similar color scheme for uh, for these different movies. So it's, it's fun. I've got a bunch of these that we play with. This one they say is Guardians of the Galaxy. And I don't know that you can tell it quite as much just from this particular clip. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but that, I, that's the next thing I need to talk about. Um, what you can do is it's, um, you can just go LumaFusion um, LUT, right? 
and you'll notice the first thing is a video that shows you how you can import them nice. in, right? Um, color grade, the next video over says color grading in LUTs. And I think, I believe LumaFusion has their own YouTube channel now, which allows you to like see these different tutorials and they're, you know, encouraging people to do, um, to, to do different uh, things like to show off what, what their program can do. So they may say a dramatic title and people will figure out how to, how to do dramatic things. Um, so if you look, you've got Filmic Pro has the official Filmic Pro LUT packs that you can download. Um, and then here is the LumaTouch forum looking for LUTs. I bought, so Rocket Stock, the top one, it's got 35 free ones. Um, I went to, I think it's Triune, Triune store. This guy is, has been, uh, it's Film Riot podcast and, and video stuff. He's been teaching people how to, how to do this stuff for quite some time. So Triune Digital, I, I was able to get some stuff on, on sale. Um, yeah, so here's Cinematic Look. Now, again, I didn't pay $35 for it. I got it like 60% off. So just if you sign up and you wait for there's a, there's a sale, um, then you can do it. But um, you know, this is showing, this is, this is how it was when they shot it ungraded, and then this is with their Avengers Endgame. LUT that's applied. And so you'll see down at the bottom it tells you what it's compatible with and it is compatible with LumaFusion. It's got there on the second. So you can actually use this in a bunch of these other places including Photoshop. Um, so this is their fourth one. So they've just, they've analyzed the different films and they've tried to Oh, this is a new one. I don't have this particular one. But it's it's a quick it's a quick easy one touch recipe, right? And it, the recipe is is hue and saturation and contrast and all those little tiny things that you can get in there and you can make your own. Um, but this is kind of fun to be able to, if, you, if you've got them. So if you keep an eye out, there's a bunch that are out there that are free. And, um, you know, it's just, I mean, this is, I mean, look at that one. That's, that's actually a pretty, uh, it's a pretty, oh, it's not letting me scroll up. There we go. Um, there we go. Okay. So ungraded. And this is Ad Astra. So. They've got some other things too that I've, I've got, but that's, that's one of the things. All right, so the other thing that they've got new for LumaFusion is story blocks. So if you look on the sources, right below imported, it says story blocks. There is some free stuff that's now baked in here. Mm -hmm. You can subscribe and get access to a whole bunch of other stuff, but I don't know, it seems a little hit or miss whether that's a good idea with story blocks. But if you look under story blocks, the first one is footage. And so you'll see the first four are free, the rest of them you would have to subscribe. Um, but like, you know, this is a pretty nice, this is a pretty nice little um, B-roll kind of thing. Um, and you download it to your device, the story blocks thing goes away when you, when you do that. Um, so, you yes, exactly. Hi, can I help you? It's not here. I'm not real sure where. <laughs> That's okay, no problem. So the next one says backgrounds. So um, you've only got two that are free here. You can kind of see it's just this kind of like movie background. It's all moving. You've got an abstract. And these are like 20, 20 seconds long, but you could just repeat them over and over if that's what you needed. Um, it's got some music, which is kind of cool. So this is... Um, I think it's because I'm on Wi-Fi that it's not showing up real well. But there, okay, it's not showing up. I think it's because we're on, on Wi-Fi. But there's some amount of music that's baked in. So if you look in there, there's probably 10 or 12 different songs. Some of them are incredibly obnoxious. Um, others, others I've actually used. Um, let's see, what are we? 
Yeah, I think anything that's, the loops are gonna be the same thing. I, I'm not sure if this stuff's gonna show up because I'm not, because I'm on a Wi-Fi. Um, let me see, but it's got some sound effects. Okay, here's a few that I've already downloaded. So like here's, I think I used this one for something. I used this for the barbecue competition, right? This is the full song and just like some of the other places we've, we've shown, this is, this is music that you can use for free. Um, this was another one that I used. This is also a story block one. Use that for the uh, farmer's market. So you can download them to your device so that you can use. Here's, one, here's another one of the uh, free loops. And it's just, it's water, water hitting. Um, it gets, I don't know, it gets twitchy when I'm, oh, I, you know what, one of the reasons it might, may or may not be showing up has to do with the fact that I'm recording the screen. But anyway, Storyblocks, check that out if you haven't, um, haven't already because there's some amount of stuff that's there that you can use. And it's pretty clearly marked, it says free. So if you were to go to footage and try to use, you know, try to use the gliding shot of busy, gliding shot of busy nurses, you know, it pops up and it's like, well, you can, you can pay $10 a month or you can pay $70 for the year. I honestly haven't seen so much stuff that's in there that it's really worth $10 a month to have access to it. Because like I said, Pixabay is like rocking my world at this point, you know. Um, I'm using that for a lot of the projects if I think I need, need stuff. Um, but I mean, you know, maybe maybe that's something. The thing that's weird about Storyblocks to me is Storyblocks is available as a web. There's a website for Storyblocks, which has different stuff. Some of the same stuff, but different stuff. But the subscription you do through LumaFusion doesn't isn't the same as the subscription through the full website of things. And so. Um, most of, most of the people that use this program don't really think of it in terms of being a very good value for the, for the money, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, we know so many of the iOS apps are um, moving to a subscription-based model, which is really frustrating because, you know, I don't mind spending $30 for LumaFusion or $20 for LumaFusion to have it. I'm not sure, I mean, I don't know. LumaFusion, I would be pay if they go to a subscription model, I will be doing that. But there's a lot of there's a lot of apps that when I look at them, if I can pay one amount for them, I'm super happy to do that. Um, if it's a subscription thing, then that's not quite what I'm what I'm interested in. Um, okay, so we've got about 10 minutes. We don't have enough people to really make good decisions about what what we want to do in the future. Hopefully, in two weeks, we'll have more people and we can we can do that. Um, since you're our new, our newest member, um, is there what? Are, what do you want to learn how to do? Or do you have anything in particular? I'm just good with the flow. Perfect. Um, what kind of projects have you done for yourself? Have you have you done any kind of? Uh, you haven't. Okay. Perfect. Um, do you happen to have anything like an iPhone or an iPad or an Android tablet, something that you could shoot? And that's it. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll have to kind of try to help help you in some different some different ways. A lot of what we're um, a lot of what we would be doing, we would have n there, you would have no problems actually using your own cameras to do it. Um, but editing might be a little issue. Might be a little bit right. Um, the the principles okay. that we use for the for editing are going to be the same regardless. Um, but since we are focusing on, on um, mobile, most of what I'm going to show you when I'm editing is going to be on this other program. But there's plenty of, all the techniques are really the same. It's just whatever program you like and that you use, the more you use it, the better you get at it. And um, that's part of the reason why, okay, so for the last couple of years I've been having to do my projects mostly from, mostly from a recliner, right? Um, so I have a Mac and I have access to some of the bigger, better programs, but because I'm not using them so often, I find that it takes me so, so long to remember how to do things, how to do things with the computer pro uh, programs versus, a, you know, versus over here. And sometimes it's the opposite, where it's like, I know, I know that I could do something in LumaFusion, I mean, in, you know, in LumaFusion, but I don't know how to do it there. I know I could do it in Premiere Pro, but I don't know how to do it here. What they were going to do was close off the room, and the the Jersey stuff is supposed to be that half of the room is what they told me. So they said I was going to be in this half. 
So that's what I've done is I've set up in this half, but I think at 12 they're going to start having a time where the baseball, softball people can come through and make sure they know what jersey size that they're going to do. So just, okay, so you, you guys that are here, what do you guys think? Do you guys want to pick up where we were left off and, 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 and do the... Well, Wyatt said a resounding maybe. Maybe, okay. Um, he says he doesn't really care. He does still have his shoebox. Okay. There's a cobweb on it, but he knows... <laughs> we, can, we can blow that off, yeah. That. Um, so he could pick up on that. Uh, there's Good. some aspects of it that are pretty cool. He said he's not interested in doing any acting himself. Okay, that's but perfect. There are usually always a few people in this class who are happy to do the acting. Right. Right. So, um, so he might have some volunteers. And who the green screen, the green screen stuff is is in, would be entirely optional. You know whether we would want to do that. That just seemed like like an extra layer we could put on at the very end. It's um, a really fun idea. I mean we, and that's I mean another yeah. option. Another option would be because you know to do these things would kind of be dependent upon everybody to to work on it between between classes so that it would be set and ready to go um, one uh, one alternative to that would be to just pick and use a single one right um, and so let's just let's say my let's say my shoebox so if I get my shoebox and I make it look like the surface of the moon and put my little model you know in there and we get it all set up then you know, if it's in class, everybody can use their devices to actually do the filming through anybody's shoebox. So I think it could be one of those things where if you desperately want to make your own because you've got this great idea, you can do that, but otherwise bring your camera and you can still create a project, you know, practice by creating a project by, you know, setting it up and using the, using the zoom that's in the camera or the iPad, which again, we're only going to be zooming like you know, maybe eight to ten inches. So I think we'd be we'd be pretty pretty safe to do that. We wouldn't get too too much pixelation, and um, zoom it up to that, and then create. Because I mean that's the thing is creating the larger unless it's unless it's like my holodeck, um, creating the larger room. That's going to take some time and some effort. And who knows? Maybe maybe everybody doesn't have the time to do that. So maybe if Maybe if we decide to kind of focus on just the one project, then everybody can kind of see um, these are the steps that we're doing. And if I want to do it myself later, then I can I can do that. Um, what I would really love, I mean, beyond this, and there's some, there's some other um, practical special effects that I'd like to continue doing um, because not everybody you can't you can't do some special effects in these that you can in others. I mean, I I haven't played around with them yet, but. Part of the things that I downloaded, um, you notice that it says Triune Store. Um, I actually downloaded some other things because they were running such a great sale at, like, I think Black Friday. So, um, you know, they've got like, what is it? Like, they've got 10 or 12 different um, VHS noise things that I haven't used yet, and it's 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 pixelated because it's playing off off. Dropbox right now, um, but they also I want to see if that, where that is Shockwaves. I think it was Shockwaves. Um, these are meant. These are typically going to be used in one of the programs that's going to be on somebody's like desktop. And you're going to be using this in After Effects or Premiere Pro. I think we can find ways to use this on LumaFusion, which is why I went ahead and got it. Um, but these are like shockwaves of things, and um, let's see if it's going to show. It. You notice it's on that black background, so I, you, you can go in with other layers and things and actually make that color, so it might be like you punch something and you have, you have the shock wave coming out. Um, their store had a number of different things that they used for this. All of these, are, all of these though, are black, black background and it's white that they've created so that you can go in and make it look different. So let's see if I still have oh that we're still on Triune Store. I'm going to see if I can show you the video that they have for that. Um, I want to say, I want to say it was like, uh, here it is. This is, let's see.
This is like layered, those shock waves, one on top of the other. This is just a still image. They've got a video. I was trying to find the video, see if I can. Come on. Let's go back. All right. Because, I don't know, like I say, video special effects, special effects on LumaFusion is, is kind of tough. Let's see. I, think, I don't know where the video, there we go. So this is what it looks, the, they look like when you play them there. Um, here we go. This is what I was looking for. So they, they're using it as they're making the sci-fi stuff. So you see, like, they've got that around the cube, kind of like from, uh, from Avengers. Yeah. Yes. And so they're using, and I, I've got these. See? So they've applied a color to it. And because it's black, you, because it's black in the background, you can take that part out. But I mean, that's that's super cool. So I, I want to start playing around with what kind of special, actual video special effects that we can do now that we have six layers, right? Um, it would be interesting to try to see. So, I mean, it's wide open. I um, got a whole nother minute of that. These guys are doing some amazing, amazing stuff with, with uh, making, making products, products available. So they've got courses, but they've got color grading things that you can download. It looks like they've, they're now adding royalty free music. I think that's like the music that we bought for our short film where you're, you're paying for all of those, those different assets, but you don't have to to keep paying them, you know. So that's the way it typically is, is if I'm, a, if I'm a musician and I create a song and you want to use it in your TV show, you pay me. Um, if, if that, you know, and, and then if that, that TV show goes into syndication, then I get paid again when that airs. And so um, this is one where you, royalty free typically means you're, you're gonna pay for it one time and then you can use it as many projects as you like and you don't have to keep paying them. So, so that's, that's good. Um, you know, I've been kicking around an idea for a, for a short film, but I, don't, I really don't think this year I'm going to have the time to be able to actually write it out. Um, Bella, not, not Ross Haven, but the, there was another Bella. Trent. Yes, Bella Trent. You're so good with names. I'm awful with them. Bella, uh, it's been a couple of years now, but she reached out on Slack, and we, we went back and forth for a while where she was trying to come up with an idea for a short story. And... Um, and, 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 and so we went back and forth where I was like, what if this was going on? And what if this was going on? And what if this was, and she's like, oh, that's cool. I like that. What about this? And so we came up with this, I, this kind of broad idea of um, a, like a, a notebook, a, a scrapbook of some kind, like a journal, that, uh, like an art journal, um, is, uh, is given to a girl. And she, she finds she stumbles upon the, uh, the realization that whatever is sketched in the book actually happens. And it just, it was like her friends, she was supposed to go for like a picnic. And so she, you know, it's raining. They're not gonna be able to do it. It's supposed to rain all week. It's been raining and she just wants a sunny day where they can go do the picnic. And she's stuck inside and she absentmindedly sketches a beautiful sunny day and her friends doing the picnic. And you know, the next day it's bright and sunny and, and they get to do the picnic. And, she doesn't quite catch on at that point, but as she goes on, she realizes that if she sketches it, 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 it happens. And so she starts to, she does it in small ways at first, and then she starts trying to use it to fix other people's problems. And um, you kind of realize that you're making things worse, right. right? And so some of the interesting ideas that we had was we found that if you tore the page out and you, you burned it, you could undo undo what you did. And so in the end, she realizes it's not a good idea to, to try to, you know, play with things that way. And she, she, she thinks she burns the, the thing. But the interesting part is in the front part of the journal, in different types of handwriting, is almost like the list of the previous owners. And it goes way, 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 way back, like to like Plato and, and you know, like, like ancient kinds of times. And the idea would be it looks different based on 
the person, right? right. So if it's, uh, it might appear as a, uh, a sports journal for a boy that might find it, but way in the past it might have been like a papyrus yeah. scroll or something. So I think it's a, this is film school. Uh, this is film school. Okay. Y'all have the record as well? Or? Yes. Okay. Um, I was I was I was told that 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 the the uniform stuff was going to set up was going to come through the other way and set up in the back part of the room. That's what I was told. Yeah, I don't know we're going to be wrapping up. In, you know, we're going to be wrapping up in just a couple minutes. Yeah. It's not my fault. So okay, so it is twelve. So um, so we will start start wrapping stuff up, but. Um, I would love to see us try to come up with some different some different projects. Another idea I had is um, on uh, Twitter there's a place that's called 60 Second Documentaries and they do it entirely in 60 seconds um, and and they you know so you've got like let's say it's and they, they pick interesting people so let's say you've got a, a boy that started a started a business um, a dog walking business and now he's, 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 you know, whatever. So you've got parts where you're interviewing and then you've got the B-roll of the kid going to people's houses and pick up the dogs and, and, but you have to tell the entire story arc within a 60 second, within 60 seconds, which is, which is tough, yes, right? It and it is. goes back to Ooh. our editing where we, don't, we wanna kill our babies and we wanna, you know, yeah, we wanna hard. keep chopping it down and down and down. Um, you know, that would be the kind of thing that, you know, Maybe we maybe we put together a group and and we we pick a person that's local here in Chelsea and say what what can we do right so like for instance uh, you know and I haven't spoken to her about it so you know uh, Jane Ann Muller here at the the um, community center she um, she tries to make sure that everything gets gets used she tries to bring in the homeschool groups and everything to to use the space here you know she works for the city maybe we can maybe we can you know follow her around the community center for a day. Thank you. Um, so that might be something, you know, that we could, we could do. Um, and have everybody work together, you know? Well, and that would bring in storyboarding. Right. And some of those other things right. that could be a group collaborative effort. And we've also talked about wanting to give back to the community. You know, maybe we, maybe we try to shoot shoot videos that show off what the community center has available. You're all right? about that. I am. I am all about that. Now one other thing, I'm going to stop my screen recording here. Um, we need to make the most of the time that we have because I will know, I will know by early June whether or not my family is um, going to be given permanent resident status for Canada. So next summer, if we will know by June of this year, uh, so not this coming summer, but next summer, if we get greenlit, then we would be moving to Vancouver Island. Um, that's interesting. Very fun, right? Um, so yeah, so that's that's where we're that's where we're at, and we'll probably be doing uh, Washington State after you know if we can't do British Columbia. Um, but I am looking at ways in which I can um, start producing lessons that can go on our YouTube channel so that, uh, you know what I mean? So that this could be, this could be, I don't know, do you know what a Patreon is? Okay, so um, artists will have uh, what's called a Patreon where they have people commit to paying a certain amount like per month to have access, right? So it's almost like... I don't know, it's almost like an old style like blogger kind of setup um, where you make posts and you can embed videos and podcasts and things like that. And so you might have some some things that everybody could, whether you're you're a patron of this person or not. Right. Um, but there are people that are doing things like making making props and teaching lessons on how to make props, let's say. And you know they may have they may have like a thousand dollars a month coming in, and they don't have to work a regular job. That becomes their job because they have enough money coming in. And so, um, right. you know, like like my husband's business partner, it's like one dollar. For one dollar, you have access to everything he's ever posted on there. So you could do it for the one month and download whatever you want, or you could just commit to that one dollar a month and you yeah. get access to everything. So a lot of the podcasts that I'm creating for my husband's company will go like on his Patreon 
for a week's early access for the people that have, have, have been, you know, that are patrons. And then after a week, it actually goes on to our YouTube channel and, and, you know, our podcasting platforms. And so I'm actually doing some of that too. And that's, that's challenging. The audio stuff, editing the audio stuff, that is not, that is not my strong suit. So I have to figure that part out too. Well, we know you can do it. All right. I'm going to, uh, just as a reminder, February 8th, 1030 to 12, okay. um, back here. Um, and um, I will just have to kind of look, look at, come up with a good project that we can do, and then if we have more people, we can we can really have a good discussion about what projects we want to do this year. Because I'd like to make the most of the time, you know. And I would love sure. to. I mean, I don't know if we if we could do. It, we might could do it this year. Um, they actually have a like a teen a teen track at Sidewalk. Sidewalk is a film festival. It's downtown Birmingham. It's in August. Um, we can't submit anything. We don't have this. We don't have, we would need a finished project to be, you know, yeah. sending it in for, uh, for uh, them to consider us probably right now. But, you know, it might be a fun, like, field trip, right? Where we, we go down and we, we, you know, we take a look and see what some of the other local teams can, can are, are doing and get an idea. Um, we can't do it this year as well because, or the one that's coming up in March, because again, I'll be, I'll be, what do you call it, uh, recuperating. But um, once or twice a year, they do what's called a scramble. And a team, you put together a team that does a bunch of different things, and um, you show up at a specific place and time, and they give you the, the genre and the other things that you have to do, and you have like 48 hours to shoot, edit, and turn in a project. That's tough. Yeah. And so it's, it's one of those where you just get the group together. That's the kind of thing that we could, you know, we could try to do like a weekend one day, a one day kind of thing, or, you know, we could challenge ourselves and say, you know, we're going to do a 60 second, you know, 60 second action film, you know, yeah. and we maybe, maybe pull things out of the box and say, this is the genre that we're going to do. We're going to do film noir. You know, we're gonna, you know, so we know it's gonna be black and white. We know it's gotta have, and then usually it's like an object as well. So it's like it's gotta have a plunger, you know, and it has to have has to have a line somewhere in it that says, you know, frankly, you know, I'd rather, you know, I, you know, I liked it better in Cincinnati, right? And then you all have to just sit down and try to try to come up with it and, and shoot it and do everything. It's they're just kind of fun fun projects that uh, that we do. So anyway, Absolutely. thank you for coming. I'm glad I had somebody. I was I was worried I wasn't gonna have anybody.